Yes. So let us start with the compounds of boron of group 13. So the first compound which we are going to study is borax. Right. So what does borax formula mean? I write? <coughs> borax is written by Na2B4O7 dot 10H2. Let us name this compound first. It is sodium. How many borons are there? Four, right? So tetra. Tetra boro. Okay, what did I do? I just left it here. And now I'm going to add this here. How many water molecules? This is called water of crystallization, isn't it? So how many water molecule molecules? Deca. Deca hydrate. Some uh, you uh, name it as sodium tetra borate, also fine. So I'll write that also. We name it as because the water molecule is a part of water of crystallization, it's a part of the whole crystal. So you can also write it as sodium tetra borate. Right. So this is the formula. Now what happens when I take the sodium tetra borate and I dissolve it in water. So we very well know sodium tetra borate when dissolved in water what happens? It breaks up into your 10 H2O. It breaks up into two ions. Right. Now let us see. This will break up into now this is your cation and this is your anionic part. It will break up into two Na plus plus B4O7 minus 2 because this is plus 2 this will become minus 2. Yes. Now, basically, the structure of this particular borax or borate, it is, it exists in this form. Just observe carefully. The whole thing, whatever is there, I'm going to write it in this form. So Na plus is broken. Just leave that. It's going to form a complex. Now, observe carefully. <laughs> your out of your 10 H2O molecules, your 8 H2O has just come out of the crystal okay this is your coordination sphere and ionization sphere which will be studying we are forming a coordinate co coordination coordinate covalent compound we represent it in this bracket right now observe your in this particular compound eight have already gone so how many are left you're left with two more so i'm writing that as h o h h o just to show you all okay done now after this this particular b4 o7 it exists as a B4O5. So how many oxygens are left here? You are left with how many oxygens? Two oxygens. Oxygen, oxygen. Now count your OH are two here. Your H and H are two. So total four. So it's going to form OH4. Yes. So observe carefully. And your Na plus or two Na. Your Na is here existing. Na2. So this is how it's going to exist actual molecule of borax exists in this way hope you would have understood this five are here two oxygens are here ten are here in that ten eight water molecules have come out and in that two i've written here and finally combined to form eight oh done so this is how borax is going to exist and how is this structure looking when you draw the structure of borax just observe now for drawing the structure of borax i'm just going to pick up this because this is your basic borax structure let us draw the structure now yes see yeah. now we have four borons one two three and four yes oh a four one <laughs> two three and four done now you you have to mention the oxygens one forms a bridge okay, exactly like this a bridge between what's linking now how many are there you have four more isn't it so one two three and four that's it this is your di your borax structure <coughs> b four o five oh four done now let us see one more after doing the structure we have to learn the chemical properties of borax and remember very important chemical properties okay. so in the chemical properties suppose if i take this borax this borax i'm going to take any two b4 o7 right now what i'm going to do i'm going to add seven water molecules to this i'm going to hydrolyze it with seven h2 it immediately it breaks up and it forms two important compounds one is your base right and it's going to form an acid and a base let us see what it is it's going to form an acid that acid is called boric acid 
and it also forms a base that is your sodium hydroxide right so being a uh, so boric acid once you hydrolyze it's going to dissociate into an acid and a base just observe acid plus base gives me salt plus water right so we are trying to indirectly explain the uh, the nature the neutralization reaction acid plus base gives me salt plus water that's most important reaction of your borax now uh hope uh, let us I, I use this part of the board mm, which should i use okay i'll use this part of the board now observe now one more important reaction after dissolving it with your water now what am i going to do i'm going to explain or we are going to take this borax and heat now i'm going to take this complete molecule and i'm going to heat it na2b4o7.10h2o now this is one type of neutralization reaction this is completely decomposition it's going to dissociate into products when i when you heat this we very well know when you heat a crystal it's going to lose its water of crystallization and what does it become it becomes this compound na2b4o7 it has lost this water of crystallization after that <coughs> it's going to form a further heating it's going to form a compound called sodium borate nabo2 it is called sodium borate plus boron trioxide yes this together this is called boron trioxide trioxide now these two together are called it is this particular test is used called borax b test very important test for you all now observe carefully i am going to use this compound for a test called borax b test so i'll tell you what is borax b test observe carefully so what we do is <coughs> we are going to take a platinum loop right so after taking a platinum loop you are going to just circle that platinum loop and once you circle that platinum loop just just allow it to uh, just heat it and it will become red hot then you are going to take that platinum loop and dip it in the solution this particular coil you have two one is sodium borate and you have boron trioxide once you dip that that red hot wire this these two together will combine and they form a opaque glass bead very opaque glass bead a round glass bead is formed on the platinum loop so that platinum loop with the glass bead what do you do you are going to take and dip it now what is the use of this borax bead test basically you have your transition metals right you have your copper chromium what did we we already know all the transition elements they belong to the middle series of the periodic table yes all are colored isn't it so we are going to test the color of this transition metals how are we going to test i took a platinum loop i made it red hot then i introduced in this particular uh, bead uh, this one uh, mixture of this two compounds it has formed a thick opaque glass bead now take that glass bead and you introduce into whichever metal you want copper or chromium or manganese whichever metal calcium whichever metal you want to test the color dip that bead along with the bead dip it in this metal suppose which where should you dip you have your bunsen burner isn't it the bunsen burner has two types of flames one is your oxidizing flame and one is your reducing flame so i hope i'll erase this uh, part of the compound top board right you have bunsen burner it has two types of flames yes now this one this is your the oxidizing flame and this is your reducing flame this is your reducing flame right now what happens is when you take this bead along with your copper metal suppose i am uh, you i i have to test that now i have this platinum loop with this uh, bead plus your copper now what is observed is <coughs> this particular carbon here in the oxidizing flame it looks or it is it it looks like blue the color of the salt appears blue when you introduce into your reducing flame the color of the salt appears red so it shows two different colors in your because of that we call copper as blue copper sulfate is blue in color yes so blue in oxidizing flame and blue uh, red in the reducing flame so this is called borax bead test